Hey everyone, I'm Angela Lynn. Hi everyone, I'm Jesse Lynn, and welcome back to another episode of But Where Are You Really From? We're going into a different topic today. We're talking about self-growth and unlearning our childhood traumas. Why are we talking about this? I think because it's top of mind for us all the time. It's something we are working on every day. And we've each respectively gone through enough therapy unpacking our various baggage and a lot of times childhood trauma related things that impact our day to day that it's just always there. It's something we're working on all the time. So we thought it would be an interesting topic to talk about with all of you, especially those who are also on this journey or have wanted to, but don't know where to start. Maybe listening to our experience will help inspire you one way or another. I think I actually started several years ago, but I'd say the catalyst was meeting Ramon, actually, because he is very big on self-improvement, self-growth, and has been on this path himself for many, many years now. So it was different to meet somebody who wasn't just there to talk about, I'd say more surface level things. Like I remember on our first date, right? He said stuff like, what would you do if you had all the money in the world? What would you do after that? Basically a roundabout way of like, what really matters to you? And like, what meaning do you want in your life? So he's always been very like thought provoking in those kinds of ways. And he threw some books at me and like, was just kind of like, well, he's an avid reader. So not literally, but he had so many books and he's like, oh, you should read this one, you should read that one. And I'm like, sure, sure, sure. But eventually I'd say kind of like by osmosis, seeing him and the way that he operates encourage me to want to be more mindful of myself and like be more self-aware and try to be a better person. I think I'm already a pretty good person, but at like my core, but you can always be a better person. And then I started therapy four years ago, maybe now. And anyone who's gone through therapy knows that that's a huge way of opening, like what the hell is going on under the surface where things are coming from, like why you're triggered by certain things. And it's so dang cliche, but this cliche exists for a reason that so much of your baggage that exists comes from the way you were raised. And I don't know how many times I've said this to my therapist where it's like, blah, 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 no surprise, I guess the first time that happened was with my mom, (laughs) like when I was a kid. So I think working through enough years of therapy and like just learning to become more self-aware of my actions and why I think certain things, why I do certain things has all been really important to me. And it's a big part of who I am now is trying to like recenter myself and to, I'd say like raise the bar, I guess, on where I hold myself to. I think something that is really frustrating about self-growth is that you always want to be done with something, right? You get something, you're like, I'm not done with it. And this is one of those things that like, you're going to die and you're not going to be done with it. And so that's like something you just have to accept. I think for me, the journey has really just been about maybe a more objective evaluation of my life and myself because I think the two things that really stand out to me when I think about the problems that I have in therapy are finding love for myself and also being my own cheerleader. So like I even think that You know, you were kind of saying that you didn't start this path until you met Ramon, but I celebrate the fact that we both came out here to pursue like a vision of what we wanted for the future. And that takes like a lot of guts to do to be like, sorry, like this is what I want to do. And like, I don't want to be around this anymore. And I want to build this like vision of my life. So like, I I try to like look backwards and really like, judge up the decisions that I make because I think about making that decision now and I'm like I don't think I can do that now like so my my path has just been really focusing on how to like take care of myself know that I am making the right decisions for myself and really feel like appreciative of the choices and um, the relationships and all of the good things that I've cultivated in my life there's a certain empowerment that comes with wanting to be on a path of self-growth because a lot of people 
go through life without being so self-aware of why they're saying certain things, why things bother them, and they just kind of blame circumstance as opposed to when you are more self-aware of your own thinking and how it's kind of playing into why you feel so bad, sometimes you can talk yourself down. And that's a really hard thing to do to be able to like unpack that, especially in the moment of when it's happening. Like this is not the same thing and I'm causing myself to feel bad. But if you are able to be more self-aware of these past trigger points and how to accept that they happen, but that they don't need to control you in the future, like you can take more ownership of your own life and your own happiness by not just like sitting in the shit of your, your past traumas. I think what's so great about that is you can turn something that's negative. You can recognize an experience that has you know, in some way, not shaped you in a great way, and change that into something that is helping you soothe a current fear, or helping you push past a certain blockage. And generally, my feeling in therapy, when I get those kind of little breakthroughs, where my therapist was like, well, don't you see like, you're doing this, like this, those are so powerful because you're like, oh, wow, like it isn't just me running from something. It isn't just me trying to mitigate something. It's me like actively trying to resolve that fear or absolve myself of guilt or something like that. And it feels really good to be able to take something that you think you don't have any power over and make it a strength. Hey listeners, wondering how you can support us? The biggest way is by increasing our visibility by following us on Instagram at where are you from pod, on TikTok at but where are you really from, subscribing to our YouTube channel under but where are you really from podcast, rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts, and telling your friends. The more people we can get to listen to the show, the more we can continue spotlighting different perspectives and stories. And if you feel so inclined, we're also accepting donations at buymeacoffee.com slash where are you from. Thanks y'all. <laughs> And in the spirit of empowerment, one of the books that Ramon had me read was written in the 70s. So it's like a fairly old book. It's called Getting the Love You Want or Need, one of those things. And it postulates that everyone unconsciously looks for a partner who f is similar to one of their parents and you're seeking the partner to heal traumas that that parent has maybe caused in the past. You can heal past childhood trauma that still affects you today by having a healthy relationship with somebody who has similar characteristics but can act in opposite ways. The other part of this being that I think one of the reasons we are interested in this topic is wanting to be generational game changers. I think we're we, maybe we look at this slightly differently because we've talked about if you want to have kids in the future, who knows, but Ramon and I want to have kids. And especially viewing my friends who are already parents now who have like their first or second child and seeing how they're approaching parenting, knowing the type of upbringing that they had with, you know, stereotypical like Asian parent upbringing. And so you have to be aware of the things that you that affected you negatively as a child to know what you don't want to repeat. And I'm going to call out Catherine, who uh, is one of my friends who we had on the show on season one. Well, we don't do seasons anymore, but way back in the day, we had Catherine and Mark on to talk about parenting. And I love seeing Catherine with her daughter. One of the like sweetest moments I noticed, and I was like, oh, that is a perfect example of being a game changer is her daughter hurt herself playing with like a toy or whatever. And then she started crying and she went up to Catherine to get to be consoled, right? Like she's in pain and she's crying and she wants her mom to make her feel better. And Catherine started to say the thing that every Asian parent has ever said to their child when so they're not feeling good. They said, and this is why we don't do, you know, like this is why you shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z. Like they start yelling at you when you're like in pain and I heard her start saying it like this is why we and then she stopped herself and she's like that's not gonna help you if I say that come here 
and all she, she, they just embraced her daughter and was like, I'm sorry, you're feeling bad. Like, let me help you and like hugged her and was like, are you feeling better now? Yeah. So it's fighting your instincts to want to repeat the same things you were brought up on that you hated. There's so many things I hated about the way I was brought up, not to like throw my parents under the bus. They did their best, right? And every generation was brought up by the previous generation. And it's very hard to break patterns. It's easier to just mirror the same way that you were brought up. So I don't blame them from that respect. It's just that it did have an impact on me. And it does with me wanting to be more self-aware of myself and how I want to carry myself in the future. It's very important to me to know what those things were that kind of shaped me in a worse way. So I know what I don't want to repeat in the future. You could take that kind of relational model that you learned and you could apply it back to your relationship with your parents as an adult. And a lot of people do, that they don't have a good relationship with their parents and they continue to not have a good relationship with their parents because that's just kind of what they learned. And I feel like when you start to get more curious about what things hurt you and why they hurt you and like how you can take care of those things, it kind of lessens the pain of having to go through that where you can also flip that relational model and be like, you know, I recognize things happened growing up. You guys tried the best you could and I didn't necessarily get all the validation and the love in the ways that I wanted. But that doesn't mean I'm going to let that change how I want to create a relationship with my parents and what that relationship looks like, right? Like, I think what's really great about going through this process is you, you add a lot more intention into what you're doing and what you're thinking. And so you can really say like, okay, I'm ready to re-engage with my parents. I want to build a relationship. And that relationship looks like this. We talk on Sundays, we go on vacations every year, they come to visit me once a quarter, something like that. Again, it's very empowering to be able to make those decisions and say like, this is what I want. And I know that I can get that for myself. You've done a better job than I have probably with building that positive, like proactive relationship with your parents. I'm trying, but you know, we're all human. We can only do our best. Some of the hardest people to change your relationship with are your parents because it's very hard to change that dynamic. You started as a child that they were the authority figure, right? Like they, they brought you up. So you depended on them. You saw them as this like above you entity. And now you're an adult. You're both adults. You've both lived your lives now to a point where you can decide how you want to interact with each other. And I agree, it's like, it's up to you to want to act differently with them. And it's very difficult because it's just so easy to fall back into like your teenage self, right? Anytime. And it does take a lot of effort, but I, I'm trying this now. It's so hard and I'm not great at it every time. But when I start feeling that little tension of like, Ugh, I'm starting to get a little annoyed with like whatever you're saying right now, I try to ask myself like, is this really that annoying? This is, you know this is how she is. Like, this is just how she is. And like, she's not trying to annoy you. She's not trying to like, tell you how to live your life in a way that like, you can't say no or whatever. This is just kind of her personality. And you should know this because you've lived with it for now your whole life. So is it worth getting riled up about it versus like, letting her say her thing and being like, okay, thank you. <laughs> like, I will or will not be doing that. But okay, that's your opinion. You know, like, learning to accept that people can have also their own opinions about things and doesn't mean that you have to follow through with whatever they advise you to do or whatever. And it would, it just makes them feel better to be able to say whatever they wanted to say but you're your own person and you make your own decisions. So you don't have to do whatever they tell you to do or get angry at them because they had a different opinion. You're coming at it more from a place of, a place of grace. I like that, a place of grace. Yeah, where it's, you try to see your parents more as people as they are rather than to see them as challenges to change or overcome. And I think that the more that I see my parents as people, the more that I find opportunities, I think, to connect with them as people. So 
An example is my grandfather is not doing really well, and my mom went back to Taiwan、um, basically to hopefully see him the last time. I think he's still chugging along a little bit. But if I had been so caught up in how I felt about them and how like things were growing up, I don't think I would have seen their need. For emotional support at this point in time, right? I would have been like, oh well, pff, that's not really like I don't care about that. But for me, I was like, wow, I heard that, and I immediately was like, my mom must be so upset, and she's been away for so long, and she has siblings. But like, my dad and me are like the people that are closest to her, so like, she probably really needs our support at this time. And then also thinking about my dad, like he's really only had my mom for a really long time, so I'm like, okay, like. I know it's really hard to talk to my dad sometimes, but like he's probably feeling pretty lonely. She's been gone for a while, and so I think like thinking about my parents more as people who have similar needs as me makes me more empathetic and think about them from a place of grace. I love that, and that similar to what we talked about in our seeking parental love episode, where the main change from childhood to adulthood is that as children. We only cared about ourselves, and we saw parents as just like this secondary character in our lives. That hey, your job is to be my parent, but I'm the main star here. So when you interact with them, it is not just about what you need and what's bothering you and all that. It's like take it in the context of what they've gone through and what's going on with them. And how all that plays into what your relationship currently is. So I agree, and it's very hard. I still struggle with it for sure. It's so much easier to just default to like, "Ugh, you're my parent. Like this is just, <laughs> that's just the only thing you are." But it's it's not true. Well, listeners, we hope you enjoyed coming along with us on this journey in, ter- in journey of reflection on self growth and how we can learn to unlearn. And not perpetuate generational traumas. We would love to hear from you if you're, you know, at the start of your self growth journey, or you're at the end of your self growth, or not the end, but like you're very advanced in your self growth journey. What's the thing that you struggled with the most? I mean, maybe it's something that Angela and I discussed today during the podcast, or maybe it's something totally different. We would love to know. Yes, and we are here for you because as I think everyone who is on a, any sort of self growth and self awareness journey, you automatically feel kind of a connection to other people who are also trying their best to like be better people because you know the struggles that they're going through. So yeah, let us know where you're at, and we'll chime in as well, and we can make a little community around it. And come back next week because we will have another episode for you then. And until then, Saijian bitches. bitches.